Sure. In for the Night is a podcast that discusses movies, random topics, and gives you an excuse to just stay in for the night. And you get to hear him complain early. What do you mean? I got you saying sure really loud. Good. Sure. Sure. I asked him if he was ready and he said sure very hostile like. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So welcome to In for the Night. My name is Katie. I'm itchy. You're always itchy. My neck is really itchy. She has crabs on her neck, people. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> she has crabby patties on her neck. Are you calling my neck fat? How is saying you have crabby patties on your neck calling your neck fat? Because it's burgers from SpongeBob and I never watched SpongeBob, so I love SpongeBob. Of course you do. What's your name? SpongeBob. Okay, SpongeBob. S B S B S B. Uh, no, for the blur, visual. like always. Blur. Well, this week we've had another encounter with our dogs. We brought Fifi in last week because she had an ear infection, oh, an infection behind her ear after the dog got into a fight. And now she's bald around her she's ear. She's bald on her right side of her face. And then Lala started having this big thing on the side of her on the side of her. Which I said she needs to go to the vet. Wifey's like, no, it's fine. And She's going to be all right. When do I sound like that? When you say that we don't need to take her to the vet when she does need to go. I was just thinking it was a bruise because last time she had a bruise on her chest. Yeah, it was and thick. it was red and then it goes away. This was not red. It didn't, it was I said there. give it till Tuesday and then it didn't happen. So I was like, okay, we can bring her to the vet. No, you did not say that. I set an appointment on my own. Because anyway, it was not going down. So she had to have a drain put in because she had uh, an abscess. An abscess, which is really like a cyst. And it was like this big on the side of her. It was huge. It was huge. And they drained but, it and they put uh, drains in it. And so she's been leaking goo out of her it body. It smells like old raw meat, like raw beef. It's fucking gross. It's actually raw dog. No, it's, apparently, that's what made it. That, that makes sense why people eat dog now, which is terrible. Like, oh. but it makes sense because if it's dog smells like that, then it's like beef. It's Would I ever eat a dog? No. It's like in the countries that eat dogs, they are farmed like cows to eat. Like, I don't understand sad. the problem. So sad. Just because they're pets normally. I mean, Koreans do have, like, in Korea, they eat dogs sometimes. And they have pets with dogs, but they actually have dogs that they How breed. How can you have a pet that's a dog, but then eat dog? That's like having a pet cow, but then eating it. They do. That's terrible. And those people that do that are it's terrible people. It's the circle people. of life. We are like the apex predator up no, here. We're not. Only reason I mean, why we're, we're under a- like T-Rexes. The only reason why we're apex predators is because we have fucking guns. If we didn't have guns, lions would be apex apex predators. They are technically in their like we're not apex setting. predators because we have a fucking rifle. No, that's bullshit. We're, we're not apex. Now, if we can go out and fucking kill a lion or a bear, barehanded or with a knife, okay, then I'll take that. But most people cannot See, do that. But you have to think about it. A lion has its own weapons because it has really sharp teeth and claws. So that's his rifle. Then they can grow their nails out, sharpen them, harden them, and then Dip grow them their teeth in silver out. And, they and then lie. now they have sharp claws too. They like, always have sharp. That's claws. why I said a knife. Okay, we can give ourselves so a fighting we have like, chance. Like technically, the lion's claws are the knife. They, but they have ten of them. Well, well twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really use their back legs unless they're like climbing. Uh, or, yeah. That's why when we had a cat and we before I knew what declawing actually did, we had our cat declawed, but we didn't do the back, uh, the back feet because if they needed to get away from something, they could climb up a tree. This declawing is very terrible. Do not declaw your. Cats. But have your pets spaded or neutered? Yeah, declawing is very like painful and sad. I didn't know about it either. We had our cat Margaret declawed, but that was like the only cat my mom and I owned when I was growing up. I've had a lot of shit ton of cats. Yeah, and none of our it. cats are declawed, which they scratch everything. Those fuckers. But anyway, I had a friend. Um, he had a cat, and after they got him declawed, he got real fat. <laughs> 
<laughs> this guy Tommy was, like, was depressed. Like <laughs> he was just happy. He wanted food. He was he was an indoor cat, so it didn't matter. But it was just it we was hilarious. We have two indoor cats. Well, no, Gordon goes outside, and Nugget goes outside too. Sometimes, but they don't go very far. Yeah, but Nelly goes like all over the neighborhood. She makes friends with her neighbors. I'm like, one day she's probably not going to come back, and she's just going to be adopted by them. That's fine. I like one less animal in a good way. And Nelly is like the least needy animal she's other than well, she wants love, but that's about it. All of the Amazon um, drivers love her. They'll stop. They'll put the box down and they'll pet her a little bit. She just wants, and then love. he'll get up. And he's just like, he's like, he's like, oh. all right, I guess I gotta go back to work now. This <laughs> big ass black dude with dreads walks up and he's like, look at you. <laughs> 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 and so she rolls on her back, meowing. Oh, dogs are fighting. Take a shot. Hey. Well, he was trying to bite her. <laughs> right. Her um, freaking, uh, other than that, that's that's pretty much how our week's gone. I actually went to... I don't know if I said this. I went to the endocrinologist. I had my blood work done this week. And t- next week, Tuesday, I have my ATCH test, which is testing my uh, cortisol levels. My doctor thinks I have Cushing's, which is not great. What? It means my cort- cortisol levels are too high mm. and my body cannot process it to make it go lower so i'm always at a like a level 10 you said cushions cushings cushions that's interesting but, so we'll see i have another test to take and hopefully that'll be the last one because in the span of this year i've had probably about like two liters of blood taken out of me more 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 i'm like i have a bruise like on my arm from where it got it that little bitty baby bruise because the bitch was evil she kept on jabbing it in she's like uh uh and then Maybe she moved she it around how, in there. It's because she ah, knows how evil you dick. are. That's why. He's going to knock it over. No, he's not. He's All right. So take another shot because they're fighting again. Um, so let's just get into the movie. Thank oh you. All right. He laid down. He's being obnoxious. Uh, it's Wade this time. No. Okay. So we're going to get into a movie. If you have not watched it yet, um, watch uh, Good Burger 2. Good Burger Dose. So I did not realize how difficult it was to find. It is technically on Amazon Prime Video, but you have to watch it through Paramount Plus, which if you already have it, awesome. If not, you can do a seven-day uh, free. Well, oh. don't forget to cancel it unless you want to keep it. I mean, you, you get sports, so you could probably watch football or something on it. Mm. But... Um, so Good Burger 2 is there, and we're going to read stuff. Zero is in my lap. Take another shot, folks. All right. It was only an hour. It felt like it was like two hours long. Um, <laughs> I was like, fuck, this is a long movie. Uh, so we got Good Burger 2 came out at Trois at Trois at Three. Oh, two, sorry. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's sad. So we got a 5.4 out of 10 on IMD Bizzle, 59% on Rotten Potatoes. That sucks. Pretty low. I mean, they're about even, but pretty yeah. low scores there. Um, wait. What? Uh, I guess that's the synopsis. Yeah, it's really short. Oh. <laughs> Penis peni. Jesus. Sorry, I was distracted by dogs. Dexter Reed and cashier Ed re- reunite as fast food restaurant Good Burger with a hilarious new group of employees. Uh, wait, Monique wasn't in this one? I don't know. Just read. That's weird. Why is it showing? I think it just mixed both of them together. Like, I already read it. Odd one. I thought you were going to list the characters. Oh, well, like you normally do. Cal Mitchell as Ed. Which have, he was actually on Hell's Kitchen in one of the chef tables this last episode. Oh, he was? Oh, yeah. Nice. And if you, for y'all who don't know, he's like a pastor now? I think he's a youth pastor. A youth pastor? Um, we have Kenan Thompson as Dexter Reed. We have Cher Jackson as Monique, but she was not in the second one. I don't know why they have her on there. Uh, Karma Lecture as Roxanne was shown in appearance again. She was a nanny. <laughs> she was a nanny. <laughs> in like heels and a tight ass dress. Come yeah, on. Right. Oh, uh, we have Alex Hibbard as Ed 2. Uh, Josh Server. Oh, that's cool. As Fizz. And then we have Laura Beth Dimberg as Connie Muldoon. 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 Uh, I'm Connie Muldoon. Good Burger 2. Is, like, is Sinbad in Good Burger 2? No. No. 
Oh, they didn't have the lawyer dude on here. I'm surprised they didn't show him. Hold on, let me... And then the evil guy in this one is Little Rail Howry. What? <laughs> it's his, it's his is name. That... <laughs> uh, Cecil McNiven. And then we have Fabrizio Guido. <laughs> Gudo. That's Fabrizio? The, uh, that's Doc Mi- or Mr. Jensen. Oh. And then Julian Bell as Cat Boswell. She has a really short haircut there, too. Yeah, she's in uh, Workaholics. So if you don't know who that is, she is Jillian on Workaholics. Oh, she uses her real name. But let's get into it. Um, she uses her, who uses her real name? Uh, in Workaholics, she's a character, and her name in the TV show is Jillian. Oh, nice. And so, um, Good Burger 2 is pretty much kind of the same as Good Burger 1, except Good, Good Burger 1, in my opinion, was way better. I thought this one had, like, more of a... I don't know. I like the story in this one better just because... It's the same exact story. It is. But, like, Ed... Well, I don't want to give away stuff. I, guess. I mean, you can say it because it's the same exact So, movie. apparently, Ed owns Good Burger now because of his sauce. Like, they were going to shut down, but his sauce, like, made them mm-hmm. stay open for another 20-plus years. Because if y'all don't know, the first one came out in 1997... And this years one later. is 2023, so 26 years later. I did math wrong, and I was like, She's like 16. Ago? I was, I was like, like, I was wait, 20, what? I would be 26 now. Ugh. I was like, your math is a little bit wrong there. And I said 26, and she's like, 16. I didn't hear you. because You never hear me, because I'm your husband. Anywho, um, and then there was something else. He said, uh, oh, and Ed has like eight kids or Named some after shit. condiments. <laughs> Yeah, name that they're condiments. Ketchup, mustard, onion cries a lot. And I, I was one because you don't see his wife until like later. And I and then first Roxanne pops out, and I was like, oh, he got with Roxanne. And then like the wife pops out, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what is his name? Edie. Her name is Edie. Edie. So it's like Ed, but and she she was pretty. She is pretty. I wonder um, how he got together with her. I was hoping they would say how they met at least, but they didn't. So. They just kind of like glossed over that yeah, situation. Just, and she does not support him at all. She did not go to any of the functions. She <laughs> didn't. Yeah, you see her at the house and that's it. Like you don't see her. She had a very short part. The house was really nice and it was decked out in all things Good Burger. Yeah, all Good Burger thing. I mean, he owns Good Burger. Apparently he, I wonder how much money he actually he has. He said 13 though. million, 71, 71, 71. And he's like, I can give you $136. So Move like, the snowman. <laughs> like if he owns Good Burger, he has to have money. Like it's only one it. building though. It's only Still. one. That doesn't mean he's rich. No, I didn't say rich, but he at least should be making six figures. Like at least. <laughs> so the thing is, if he owns Good Burger, it would be his decision to give everybody a raise, but he didn't before. Because he doesn't know that he's not a businessman. He's smart when it comes to certain things. Holy but shit, he's a genius. Not... Him and his son, fuck. Yeah, his he he doesn't know the whole business aspect. Like our good friend D O M. Oh. <laughs> I was supposed to be in on a meeting. If I know he's not listening to this, everybody knows he was on the fucking podcast. I know Dom. Um, he's my boss. Love him to death. I was supposed to be in a meeting yesterday. He was supposed to call me at 2.30, and I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, and I'm like, 3.30 rolls around, and I'm like, yo, is the meeting happening? Question mark. And he never responded. Oh, he still hasn't said anything? Uh, I met, I sent him a message today uh, about the Airbnb that they're in, and he, he gave me a thumbs up, and I'm like, well, at least he's alive. Maybe, I, maybe he forgot, or maybe he had the meeting. I don't know. That I don't weird. know. But anyway, so, yeah. He's a good... he is good at thinking up businesses i run them there you go which it should be i like doing anyway but overall we don't want to give too much away because it is a funny movie is giggled once i like the first one better yeah most people usually like first movies better than second ones it's it i felt like it was trying too hard a little bit because he started singing a song in the beginning and then he sang a song in the beginning in the first like everything was the same as in the first one. Yeah. He sang the song in the first one. They have a they, shit ton of... Even when they're running from, like, the goons, you know, in the first one, they got, like, a really close up on Kenan or Ed, one of mm-hmm. them. They did the same thing in this one. Like, it was the same shit. Um, the only difference is... 
slight difference is they had a, a lot more famous people in this movie. Oh, they had a lot. They there had was a lot of famous time. people. In like this you one. have Kronk, you have Young Gravy, you have. I don't think I don't think that one singer chick was real. Luna but, Fox, she yeah. might be, but I think they're trying I to do it. I looked it up, but I didn't, it didn't. It just said from Good Burger. Too. Yeah. Um, a lot of other people. Zoe Zaldana. They had Mark Cuban. George uh, Clinton. George Clinton, the guy that was singing Sing, the song yeah, in the first one. In the in insane asylum. Like, there was a lot of famous people in this movie, for it's sure. Like, it's, so. it's like Easter egg popping up all fucking over. The fucking all place. over. <laughs> there were some actors we didn't know who Dave, the fuck they were. Dave, what is your fucking name? What is his fucking name? Dave. It was a it was a Asian singer. last name. Oh, the singer. What? Peterson? Peter. The guy in the beginning. Who? The guy in the beginning? Oh, my At the God. movie? Yes. That famous dude who was dating like Kim Kardashian or something, who's a comedian. Oh, Pete Davidson. He's there not a go. singer, babe. I fuck if I know. <laughs> you said singer. That's what confused me. There's a shit ton of singers, shit ton of random people. Yeah, Pete Davidson. I apparently, s- from what like is going around the internet, apparently Pete Davidson is supposed to have a big old schlongage or something. He dated Kim. Like I, I don't know who surfaced it or how it became, but it's like one of those little. He probably did it himself. He, I have a big dick. Maybe. <laughs> and you just shot it out there. supposed to, so I don't know how true that is. If anyone knows, let me know. <laughs> Pictures or it didn't Pictures happen. Pictures or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is your uh, what is your score? I'll do a seven. I was going to do a seven, too. That's what came to my head was seven. It's not, like, bad, but it's not, like, amazing. So I was like, eh. Eh. Yeah, I would I watch again? Probably not. I wouldn't probably watch. I would it again. watch the first one again for sure. But we've already seen it again. I like know. I wouldn't even watch. Like it's not nothing I, against them. Like I might see it like ten years later or something. But yeah, not recent. Not like something I could watch over. I just again. like more actiony stuff, and this is not like super actiony. But... Right. All right. So that's that. Watch the movie again. You can watch it on Paramount Plus on Amazon Prime. So do Chicken it. Chicken grease and bacon grease. Chicken grease and bacon grease. Chicken and grits and bacon grease. There we go. Fuck that up. Yep. A little bit. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to the topic. This was my topic. And we are... Do you remember what it was? Uh, Salem Witch Trials? No, we did that already. <laughs> uh, we are doing the Bermuda Triangle. Ah, uh, yeah. Triangle. Triangle of Bermudaness. That's the sign for... What is it? Illuminati. Yes. Thank you. I knew it started with the I, but I couldn't think of it. All right. So we're going to cite the sources... Um, the sites are obviously Wikipedia. We have Britannica.com, History.com, New York Times. Boysack.com. History.co.uk and the Smithsonian Mag.com. Can you just... What? I'm citing sources. I thought it was a source. <sighs> nope. Okay. So we are getting into it. Um, so we're just going to do the background of the Bermuda Triangle really quick and then, yeah, let's People do it. People disappear. Done. <laughs> three pages of my notes and that's the only thing that's on it all right so the B- bermuda triangle is a section of the north atlantic ocean off of north america in which more than 50 ships and 20 airplanes are said to have mysteriously disappeared mm-hmm. the area whose boundaries are not universally agreed upon has a triangular shape a triangle is three sides just in case you don't know what a triangle is. I don't know. I thought it was a I'm square. I'm just helping somebody ace their ge- like geometry test. I thought test. it was a square or a trapezoid. Trapezoid is like that. I know. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the area whose boundaries are not universally agreed upon have a triangular shape that reaches approximately from the Atlantic coast of Florida to Bermuda, to the Bermuda Islands, and then... Known as the Greater Antilles. And then it goes to Cuba, I believe. Or Puerto Rico. Something like that. It, I cut it off on accident. Oh, so the triangle's south? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Florida, like from Miami to like here, and then it goes here. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, the area f- is also referred to as the... The area referred to as the Bermuda Triangle or Devil's Triangle covers about 500,000 square miles of ocean off the southeast tip. 500,000? Square miles. Jeez, it's that big? It's huge. Holy That's what she said. Crap. Somebody said that to Pete. I was, yeah, <laughs> someone said that to Pete. And he just ran with it. He's like, oh, thanks. Aww. Put that on the internet. Put it on the internet. Go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go, Come go. on. I'll, I'll give you permission. I'll watch you. 
I watch it. <laughs> Make, sure you tag me. Make sure you tag me. <laughs> Make sure you tag my dick. <laughs> and now his dick has his own Facebook page. Has his own Facebook page, <laughs> its own name, uh, own rap company. Yo, Pete, if you're listening to this, we want to know. <laughs> yeah, we want to know. Send it, bruh. Send it. Uh, th- the southeastern tip of Florida. Other names. So we had Devil's Triangle, Bermuda Triangle, Limbo of the Lost. That's a fun one. People do get lost. The Twilight Zone. And the hoodoo sea. Hoodoo sea. Oh. I didn't name it. Fuck. I think you did. I would I would have made it like a squiggly line around the ocean just because it's funnier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So That's reports. Five hundred thousand square miles. It's huge. Yeah. Good Lord. It's big. That's what she said. All right. Uh, Reports of unexplained occurrences in the region date to the mid-19th century. Some ships were discovered completely abandoned for no apparent reason. Others transmitted no distress signals and were never seen or heard from again. It's like terrifying. Right? And we went, flew through over it. Oh, we did? (laughs) When we went to the Bahamas. Oh, fun. We didn't disappear, thank the heavens. Or did we? And we're just in another dimension. That could be true. That could be true. All right. Aircraft has have been reported. Aircrafts have been reported and then vanished. And rescue missions are said to have vanished from flying in the area. However, wreckage was has not been found. And some of those series advanced to explain the repeated mysteries have been fanciful. So people are lying. That's mm. what some people think. Mm-hmm. So that's technically the first part of the background. You get to read number one, please. Number two. Got it. You do that every time, and it's not funny at all. To you. If anybody's laughing at this... dogs giggle. I giggle. They fell asleep? Yeah, because they laughed so hard, they fell asleep. It's not my fault you're not listening. Long before the myth of the Bermuda Triangle became popular, Bermuda had already earned a reputation as an enchanted island. Ooh. It was nicknamed the Devil's Island by early sea travelers, frightened by the calls of cow hall birds and these squeals of wild pigs that could be heard on shore but perhaps the most damn damning tales were told by sailors terrified of shipwrecks on bermuda's bermuda's treacherous stretch of reef mama, come on pretty mama come on you're being naughty. is that the full one sure yeah. okay when Christopher Columbus sailed through the area on his first voyage to the New World, New World, New World, Earth. he reported <laughs> right. <laughs> he reported that a great flame of fire, probably a meteor, crashed into the sea one night and that a strange light appeared in the distance a few weeks later. It's called the sun. Yeah, or the moon. <laughs> he also wrote about an erratic compass readings. So their compass was swirling. And then uh, possibly because at that time, a sliver of the Bermuda Triangle was on one of the few places. Slither. Place- you said that wrong. Sliver. Slither. It's not slither. That's what snakes do. Slither. That's what my pee does. Did you just say penis? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A uh, sliver of the Bermuda Triangle was one of the few places on Earth where the true north and magnetic north lined up. So, the poles are magnetic, and that's mm-hmm. how compasses work. It'll, like, point mm-hmm. to wherever. But this location, it's true north in the, what is it? True north and magnetic north line up. So, that area is where it's fucked. Mm. That's the best way I can explain that. I'm not a scientist. All right, read number two. Number two. Happy? Yes. Number three. William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, which some scholars claim was based on real-life Bermuda shipwrecks, may have enhanced the area's aura of mystery. Nonetheless, reports of unexplained disappearances did not really capture the public's attention until the 20th century. So, 1900s. All right. It wasn't until 1964 when author Vincent Gaddis coined the phrase Bermuda Triangle in a magazine article. What are you doing? Uh, this chair is fucking hurting my back. 
Yeah. Let's get to the actual numbers. Okay, so before we quoted that there were 50 ships and 20 airplanes that mysteriously disappeared, but here are the actual numbers. Oh, actually, it's the same. So in the past 500 years, at least a minimum of 50 ships and 20 aircraft have vanished in the triangle, most without a trace, no wreckage, no bodies, no nothing. So nothing came out of that. So ghost ships. Ghost ships. All right, so... Since the Bermuda Triangle is such a mystery, we don't really have a lot of information on it. It's just kind of one of those things that exists and nobody knows why and nobody really wants to look into it. Well, yeah, because you might disappear. Right. So what we're going to do going forward, we are going to have... Want to go visit it? Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's get a sloop and let's fucking sail. Let's go do it. Let's do it to it. Us on the ocean is probably the worst idea ever. I would have fun. You would get us lost. Why would I get us lost? You don't know how to sail. I'm going directions. You over there I are not. miraculously found my way places. Okay. You can't use GPS out there on the fucking water. Yes, so. you can. It's called stars. Okay. Then you're really going to get us lost. I didn't say I wasn't. We're going to end up in like <laughs> fucking Alaska or some shit. So uh, the next section we're going to cover are the most famous stories. So we're going to get into different stories about the Bermuda Triangle. And then we're after that, we're going to get into the theories. So you get to read number three. Number four. 27. That's what he said? What? I said number 27. Oh, did you? Oh, look at you. You're joining in. Congratulations. Number three, right? <laughs> I forgot. Yes, number three, please. An especially infamous tragedy occurred in March 1918 when the USS Cyclops, oh, a 542 long Navy cargo ship with over 300 men and 10,000 tons of manganese yep. ore on board, sank somewhere between Barbados and the Chesa- Chesapeake Bay. You read that really well. Right? You said manganese. I thought you were going to stumble on that one. I thought I was too. I was going to say like manhonen or something. I don't know. The Cyclops never sent out an an SOS distress call despite being equipped to do so. And an extensive search found no wreckage. Only God and the sea knows what happened to the great ship. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson said later. Oh, yeah. Good job there, bud. Uh, in 1941, it's <laughs> the only God knows. Like, fuck if I know. You're not gonna go search <laughs> that's either. actually, that's the translation. Only God and the sea knows. Translated to now a day of language. Fuck if I know. Yeah, fuck if I know. Like, <laughs> are we going to go look for him? Nope. That's, that's sad. Uh, in 1941, two of the Cyclops' <laughs> sister ships, uh, Protis and Nur- what? Where are they getting these fucking names from? Nurians, Nuranus, whatever the fuck. Similar. <laughs> Uranus? Similar, how do you say that? Sim, similar, similar. Similarly. That's weird. Vanish without a trace <laughs> along nearly the same route. So, Well, then don't go that route, duh. So going back to Woodrow Wilson, everybody, like, they have a press conference. He's like, oh, only God in the sea knows. And they're like, president, president. Oh, yeah, what's up? Oh, uh, are we going to go look for the ship? Oh, you had a question? <laughs> <laughs> he points to the other person like uh, across. Like opposite Oh, side. excuse me. I didn't point at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and all three cases, structurally, structural failure. Oh, my God. Failure due to overloading with much denser cargo than designed is considered the most likely cause of sinking. So like, yeah, but then they would find wreckage. Yeah, but unless it sank, it's really deep in that area. So like and they they if would. It's a current. It could push it somewhere. Yeah, and so See, that's why seas like scare me because yeah. for one, they're so vast, they're Mm-mm. so deep. Like what they said at the deep, the percentage of them exploring the sea is only like five percent or something. Not even like it's so crazy because it can get so deep and you can't go down there because of the pressure. Like that, that is scary. So we have no idea what the fuck is down. It's there. like the Meg when they broke through like the bottom seal and then the big shark came up and ate everybody. Mm-hmm. We probably do have Megs somewhere. I mean, it existed. 
We mean existed. It was, yeah. it's a real thing. It is a real thing, but it doesn't mean it's still a real thing. Even it though sharks be. do live for a really long time. It's just hanging out and it's like, what it's up? It's like, yeah, waiting for someone to go to. Maybe that's maybe it's just so big that it's eating the ships. There we go. The Meg is like a thousand foot fucking shark. And with his mouth the size of his house and it just fucking eats everything. It's bigger than our house. No, I'm saying the mouth the size of the, the house. I mean, yeah. Like You'd that's eat a big house. fucking mouth. That's like that big. Just that big. <laughs> Inside our house, you're holding your arms open that big. That big. <laughs> Great. Okay. So that's the, uh, the what is it? The SS Cyclops. Um, and now, two sisters. We are going to go to the next one, which is among the legends is that of the Mary Celeste. A 103-foot uh, brigantine, there we go, brigantine found floating and abandoned in 1872. Mm. The British brig Die Grazia oh, was good. about, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard, uh, was about 400 miles east of the Ozores on December 5th of 1872. When crew members spotted a ship adrift in the choppy seas, Captain David Morehouse was taken aback to discover that the unguided vessel was the Mary Celeste, which had left New York eight days before him and should have already arrived in Genoa, Genoa. Sure, yeah. Okay. Italy. <laughs> he changed course to offer help, so he's being a nice dude. Good job, Captain. And then he disappeared as well. Morehouse sent a boarding party to the ship. Below decks, the ship's charts had been tossed about, and the crew's belongings were still in their quarters. The ship's only lifeboat was missing. And one of its two pumps had been disassembled. Three and a half feet of water was sloshing in the ship's bottom, though the cargo of this of 1,701 barrels of industrial alcohol was largely intact. There was a six month supply of food and water, but not a soul on board to consume it. Wow. What happened to the 10 people who had sailed aboard the Mary Celeste? Fuck if I know. (laughs) Though uh, through the decades, a lack of hard facts has only spurred speculation as to what might have taken place. Theories have ranged from mutiny to pirates to sea monsters to killer water water spouts. Mutiny Mutiny is uh, the peep the crew takes over the ship and takes it away from the captain. Mm. So fun times. So that's the Mary Celeste. You get to read number four, five. Yep. Then there's a case of Flight 19. Wait, what's the... What's the flight from Final Destination? Do I... I don't know. Fuck if I know. (laughs) Uh, Flight Final Destination. Because technically... (laughs) Technically... There you go. See what I did there? (laughs) At 2.10 on the afternoon of December 5th, 1945, five... TBM Avenger torpedo bombers took off from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and on a routine two hour training mission in order to conduct practice bombing runs over some nearby shoals. Fuck is that? Are you sure it's not S-H- shores? H no, it's not. S H O A L S. Oh. I think it's just like like uh beaches, but they don't have anything on them. Like, it's just mm, like... Abandoned beach. Sure. Let's say that. I'm abandoned probably wrong. Beach, probably. Uh, Shut up. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, Your did, guess is as good as mine. We're going to look it up. Shoals. But with their compasses apparently malfunctioning, the leader of the mission known as Flight 19 got severely lost. Uh, all five planes flew aimlessly until they ran low on fuel and were forced to ditch at sea. The radio lost contact at 4 p.m. That same day, a rescue... I was right. So it's just abandoned shores? So it, it, in oceanography or geomorphology or geoscience, okay. a shoal is a natural submerged ridge, bank, or bar that consists of or is covered by sand. Nice. I was right. Look at me. I'm smart. I said you were right. Look at you. Shut uh, up. <laughs> uh, that same day, a rescue plane and its 13 men crew also disappeared. So this is now, what, 16 people? Because it was... It'll tell you at the bottom. There's like a total. Oh, no. Five no five TBM. So 13. So 18 people so far. 
The last thing recorded in the communications by Flight 19 passengers was eerie reports on their location. Everything looks strange, even the ocean, one pilot said. The plane... The planes and the 27 plane. men were never seen or heard from again. Wait, how did they go up to 27? Because the the flights, they disappeared, and then people went out to go look for them, and those disappeared. Well, it was only it was only a 13, well, they, they only said it was a 13-man yeah, rescue. Yeah, so 13, they were going to go rescue the 13 people, like the planes. Oh, so another plane so went out. So 14, no, 14 planes went out to go find them, and they were gone too. So 27 uh, planes total. No, this is 27 men, not planes. Okay, 27 men. So five on the, the bombers and then 13 on the first crew that went out looking for the five bombers. So that's 18. So I guess they sent I, another nine. No, it was point. two. It was two. The first people got lost and the second people came to look for them. So at the beginning, there's five. It was five. Uh, where is it? Uh, it was five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers took off from Fort Lauderdale. So I'm assuming these five bombers had one pe- one person in them, but bombers, yeah, bombers are usually one man. So, right. So that's five people, and then they sent out a rescue plane, and it's 13-man crew. So that's 13 plus five is 18. Right. And then, but they said they didn't send, nothing, like that was the last thing. It said, uh, recorded communication by Flight 19 passengers were eerie reports that everything looked strange. So then tw- the planes and 27 men were never seen or heard from again. So I guess they sent another no, plane was, out of nine was, people. No, I think it was just two. I think the math is wrong on that. Was, I just remember two. Or there was two people in each of the five bombers because that would, that would, it would be, make it right. That, I think that would be right. So. Uh, but anyway, sure. the planes and 27 men were never seen or heard from again. After a massive weeks-long search failed to turn up any evidence, the official Navy report said planes disappeared as if they had flown to Mars. That's pretty crazy. Like, Just disappeared. Like big airplanes, bombers. Yeah, well, they're not that big, but it depends on the bomber. Well, they're still not that big. Um, so yeah, bombers and then a 13 rescue plane and then probably... Whoever else, but that's six planes total that just It's like throwing a brick in the middle of the ocean. You'll never find it again. Or finding a needle in a haystack. No, a needle in a bunch of needles. Or that. Or a needle in a haystack. Because that would be impossible. Anytime we say needle, I just think of uh saw where that girl uh, fell terrible. on. And she just like fucking <laughs> Oh that pains me. Oh, uh, just like uh, to update on the dogs. We took Lala's drain out today and it was really gross. <laughs> it was squishy. It wasn't that gross, but she has holes in her body. <laughs> close up. All right. So that was flight 19. Now we are going to go to so the main reason why I wanted to talk about the Bermuda Triangle is this specific story. My balls disappeared. Because I stole them. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> If you didn't hear what he said, he said, my balls disappeared. And I paused and I said, because I stole them. You sure did. It worked out. thousand percent. So Ellen Austin ship. Um, So the ship is called Ellen Austin. Oh, that was a person. No. Oh, it could be. The ship could be named after somebody. I fucking don't know. It's true. But anyway. So in 1881, the Ellen Austin set off from Liverpool, uh, Liverpool. destined to for New York, carrying passengers immigrating to America. The ship had been at sea for several weeks when the captain took an unplanned shortcut through the Sargasso Sea. Shouldn't have done that, Captain. Shouldn't have done that, bitch. Because he's like, I'm done. I'm getting seasick and all y'all bitches are stupid. So he took a shortcut. Maybe he did that on purpose. Because he's like tired of dealing with everybody. <laughs> and he's just like, let's just go on a suicide mission. Great. Known for its stormy nature, the route led the Ellen Austin through the Bermuda Triangle. Shortly into the detour, the captain sighted another vessel sailing erratically in the distance. Ah. God. Good. The ship appeared abandoned and was moving unpredictably. So erratically and unpredictably, those mm-hmm. are two words that pretty much mean the same thing. Convinced that it was some form of a trap, Captain Griffin of the Ellen Austin kept a safe distance for two days before ordering a crew to go aboard and investigate why the ship wasn't responding to their hails. So instead of him going on board, he's like, yo, Joe, go. Well, yeah, Captain can't go. He's got to drive it. (laughs) 
He's like, I'm not going on. You go on. I, I don't want to go on either. I don't, Captain, I don't want to go. Or just leave it there. I'm ordering you to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the unmanned schooner was found to be abandoned with an intact cargo. There was no sign of violence and no indication that there was, had been a, a reasonable excuse to abandon the ship. So everything was fine. Nothing was out of place. Hmm. Captain Griffin ordered that a small selection of his crew captain the ship and that they sail together to New York where it could be salvaged. Shortly after resuming their journey, a heavy storm separated the two ships. When the storm passed and G- Captain Griffin once again sighted the mysterious ship, he pulled up alongside it and found that once again, it was abandoned and there was no sign of bloodshed or reasonable damage. So we well, got knocked off the boat. Clearly, it was a so storm. this ship had lost its original people. Mm-hmm. C- uh, Captain he put Griffin, two people on there. He put a, a small selection of people of his crew on that ship to man it. The storm separated them. He came back. Everybody's gone again. I was surprised he found it. <laughs> Whether too scared to lose yet more crew or pressed for time and resources, Captain Griffin opted to leave the ship to drift and continue to New York. The ship and its makeshift crew were never sighted again. Damn. Now he sent those people to their deaths. I mean, that's kind of creepy. Like, maybe there's something wrong with the ship, and it's just like. It maybe like it's not even people. a ship. Maybe it's just a ghost ship, and he just put people on there. And they got there is a movie called Ghost Ship. I want there to is. See. I, you it, haven't seen it? No, oh, I've seen it multiple. It's times. supposed to be like really awful, but it's so awful. It's good. It's not that awful. I didn't think it was awful, but I also saw it like years ago. I haven't seen it older, more mature. Every time we talk about the Bermuda Triangle, that's Bermuda Triangle. That's what I think of because there's one scene in there. Doesn't it like, like cut a... off people's heads or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the only thing I can remember from like something. Yeah, that's it. it cuts off a lot of fucking people. <laughs> Ew. Uh, okay, so that that's the Ellen Austin. Uh, you do number five, six. The Witchcraft was a 23-foot luxury cruiser that disappeared on the evening of the 22nd of December, 1967. The boat's owner had invited his close friends out onto the ocean to look at the Christmas lights over the waters Miami. Oh, that'd be cool. The plan was to go a short distance out to the sea, which the engine, uh, switch the engine off and enjoy the scenery. In the middle of the ocean? Yeah, that'd be cool to see. Uh, at 9 p.m. that night, Miami Coast Guard received a distress call Distress call that calmly enforced them the boat had hit something in the water and would uh, require a ton or a tow from less than a mile offshore. The owner indicated that this wasn't an emergency and that they would fire a flare to let the Coast Guard know of the boat's exact location. Uh, less than 20 minutes later, the Coast Guards reached the point where they believed that the call had been made, but there was no sign of the witchcraft or the flares. Neither the witchcraft nor her two passengers were seen again. Dun, dun, dun. Damn. So it probably sank and they died. That's because they already hit something. They had it just yeah, they hit something. So, I mean, that one's a little bit more like. No, it's like, what the hell they hit? Like, they should know not to go. I mean, like, in that area, there's, like, a lot of little islands, and then there could be, like... Well, they said there's a lot of reefs on the Bermuda Triangle. Right. Okay. So, that was this one. So, we're going to change it up a little bit. Unlike other disappearances, the Great Isaac Lighthouse mystery is unique in that both lighthouse keepers that were stationed on land when they vanished... So there's two guys on the land and they vanished. Mm -hmm. So this lighthouse is within the Bermuda Triangle. A barren island, Great Isaac Rock, already had a grim history. Local lore told of a ship that wrecked with no survivors except for a single infant. How did the baby survive? I don't know. I didn't look it up. The the whatever it is in the Bermuda Triangle doesn't like babies. Same. (laughs) <laughs> uh, first put into service in the mid 1800s the lighthouse housed the island's only two inhabitants its keepers on the 4th of august 1969 a small boat was launched to check on the lighthouse routine calls had gone unanswered upon arrival the investigators discovered that the island was empty and there was no sign of its two guardians 
A hurricane had passed over the island shortly before, but the lack of damage to the living quarters raised a question as to why two experienced lighthouse keepers wouldn't have stayed put where they were safest. Others believe that the pair were caught in a drug smuggling ring, or perhaps they were both kidnapped, but with no evidence of foul play to suggest anything untoward, the fate of both keepers remain a mystery. Fun. Right? So that was The Lighthouse. I think there's actually a movie regarding that. Um, there, I think it's the one with, what's his fucking face? Uh, Robert Pattinson, Edward mm. Cullen. I think there's one like that. I think that's about it. I mean, maybe... Hmm. I could be lying. Uh, probably could be. Could, Maybe. Could or be. Or you could be right. All right. So those are just highlights of uh, the stories, the most famous stories within the Bermuda Triangle. Um, there are a lot others. So there's a list on Wikipedia you can look through and it kind of briefly describes it and you can look into it more if you like those stories. But those, for time, those were our stories. Now we're going to get into our theories. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, all right, I, you're going to uh, start it off with number six. No, you do it. One hypothesis is the pilots failed to account for the agononic, uh, a, gon, I don't know how to say that, A-G-O-N-I-C. Agonic. Yeah, sure. Line, the place at which there is no need to compensate for magnetic compass variations or an imaginary line on the surface of the earth connecting all points at which the declination of the magnetic field of the earth is zero. Science! (laughs) As they approach the Bermuda Triangle resulting in significant navigational error and (laughs) catastrophic catastrophic catas no uh catastrophe or fuck i know catastrophe yeah sure i thought it was a different word i thought it was the catastrophe cat it's something like that i can't think of it so that's kind of similar to what we said earlier about like the north pole and the north line or something where true north line true north line so that kind of is similar with that possibility I mean, it could be. I mean, hell of a good possibility. But how? Like, th- that would make people lost, not disappear. Yeah, unless they fuck up so bad they go into the ocean. Right. And they hallucinate and they're like, "Fuck!" All right. Another popular theory is that the missing vessels were felled by so-called rogue waves, which are massive waves that can reach heights of up to thirty point five meters or a hundred feet. And would theoretically be powerful enough to destroy all evidence of a ship or an airplane. The Bermuda Triangle is located in an area of the Atlantic Ocean where storms from multiple directions can converge, making rogue waves more likely to occur. Damn. So, waves. Maybe it's both. But, I mean, would an airplane be flying 100 feet above the ocean only? No. It would right. be close. Because is that area of the water salt? Yes. Yeah, they definitely would not be that close because salt damages engines. So they wouldn't be that close. So that really doesn't... It could atone, like it could atone for the ships. I mean, unless they're in like a cloud and then they fucking come out of it and they're like, oh shit, we're close to the water because like the whole compass is fucked up. Then I mean... Yeah, that could be possible. But... They could end up being close to the water on accident. But like flying that close to the water purposely? No. Mm-mm. That's why planes nowadays they they're uh, they can only be over water for so long because it will like even being that high above it still can damage the engine. Well, that's scary to think crazy. about. Number seven. Uh, uh, number eight. You have nine on here. You have nothing. I thought it up. Probably. Good job. Can you just read number eight <laughs> or seven? Ha <laughs> ha. We said numbers. Leave me alone. Uh, The most recent scientific theory on the infamous triangle suggests that a freakish disappearance of ships and aircrafts could be the result of large deposits of methane gas spewing. I like that word. Spewing. That's what my pee-pee does. Up from the ocean floor. Spewing. Uh, Huge eruptions of methane (laughs) bubbles may push water away from a ship causing it to sink. 
If the highly flammable methane then rises into the air, it could ignite in an airplane's engine, causing it to explode and disappear. But wouldn't that yeah. cause debris that would randomly wash up on some sort of Not island? Not necessarily if it just fucking sinks. Like if that's like a kind of like a black hole and it just... That is a good explanation for for uh re- like sinking like disappearances completely but not ships that don't have crew that doesn't I mean, explain it i mean there is life in the ocean so if a person ends up the in Kraken. the ocean they could get eaten by something especially if they're bleeding sharks eat us when they're bleeding even though they don't like the way we taste but they'll still freaking eat us so but i don't know cuz then wouldn't you see like blood on the ship no, they're not going to crawl into the ship and eat it. If they're thing. already bleeding. No, the ship is wreckage, so they're bleeding but in the, the water. But the ships that were floating around, that had no people on them. That's what I'm talking about. Babe, they go to side to side so they can get thrown off. It doesn't All mean... of the crew? Yeah, unless they're underneath, but then no. But, I mean, if they're on top, yeah, they're going to get thrown off, especially in a bad storm. And apparently storms get really bad there, so. Right. Well, that's where, like, a lot of hurricanes happen, so. Yeah. All right. I think this one's probably my favorite. You're my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, one explanation pins pins the blame on leftover technology from the mystical lost continent of Atlantis. Sometimes, (laughs) Sometimes connected to the Atlantis story is this emerged rock formation known as the Bermini Road off the island of Rimini in the Bahamas, which is in the triangle by some definitions. Followers of the purported psychic Edgar Seiss, oh my God, this is hard to read, okay, take his prediction that evidence of Atlantis would be found in 1968 as referring to the discovery of the Bermini Road. Believers describe the formation as a road wall and other structure, but the Bermini Road is of natural origin. So... Lost city of Atlantis. Hmm. I mean, there could be a city down there. You never know. I mean, it is fucking big enough. 500,000 square miles of ocean. So mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a, a uh, what do you call it? Um, Aquaman city down there. Here we go. Jason Momoa. He's just Mimosa. hanging. Mimosa. Mimosa. He's just hanging down out there stabbing fucking what's her face with his trident and trying to kill her. Amber. Yes. Okay. Um, (laughs) Some hypothesize that a parallel universe exists in the Bermuda Triangle region, causing a time space warp that sucks the objects around it into a parallel universe or even aliens. So, yes, to all of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, The last thing that I'm going to add on to this, and we can speculate on what our favorite is. Um, Let's leave it at this. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, so NOAA, there is no evidence that mysterious disappearances occur with any greater frequency in the Bermuda Triangle than in any other large, well-traveled area of the ocean. And boaters and flyers continue to venture through the triangle without event. And I put there, boo! Just like us. We went apparently through the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, what's up? Well, so, they probably figured out technology and they know like. Because I don't think now there's not as many disappearances like current as as of current. So I'm not sure. There's probably none now. I mean. What was the most recent one? Do you remember on that list? Uh, I can look it up really quick. But like, which theory do you think is best? Um, Wait. Were both my theories on here? Oh. I think the my number six one, the hypothesis is that the pilots failed to account for the agnotic line, whatever the fuck that is, which there's no need to compensate for magnetic compass variation. I think that one's pretty hmm. pretty reasonable. Oh. Okay, so the most going back to it, the most recent one that disappeared yesterday. Was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, on May 15th of 2017, a private MU-2B aircraft was at 24,000 feet when it vanished from radar and radio contact with air traffic controllers in Miami. Plane wreckage was never found. Damn, so it's still happening. Damn. It seems like 
Because, like, what, what is all these bombers disappearing? Like, that's kind of weird. This is, like, the sixth bomber that we know of between what we read and that one. Is that it have just bombers? Because I, I haven't read anything about, like, passenger planes. Yeah, like, passenger planes don't go missing. It's like bombers. Like, someone's strategically taking these bombers. So, in kind of similar, like, the Malaysian flight that disappeared, like... It was really weird, and I watched that uh, documentary about it where it was, like, going to... Forgot the location, like, from Malaysia to Indonesia or something around that area. Mm-hmm. And he was flying up, and then all of a sudden they found, figured it flew back down completely in the direct opposite location of where they're supposed to go. And, like, they don't know why. And, like, three, like, maybe 150 passengers disappeared. Hmm. I mean, that's a passenger plane. Right. But that's not on the Bermuda Triangle. That's in Asia. Oh, but, got it. But I'm just like, that's... Of course, I didn't read every single story for each of these. So it could there could be passenger planes. I just didn't read. Um, so I want to believe... The City of Atlantis. City of Atlantis. Of course you do. I like that one. But do I really believe it? No. Oh, okay. I'm I... I have to like take you to the doctor. Ping going to the doctor. Have them knock on your cranium. I probably have a tumor. Um, it's not a tumor. Um, I believe in the huge possibility there is a gate to another dimension. Yeah. So it's like, what was that movie? Stargate. Remember Stargate mm-hmm. where you walk through? SG1. And so, no, just regular Stargate. Um, but anyway, so like you could... That's why people disappear is because they'll go through it not realizing they're going through it. Same with like fucking planes being so high up. Like 24,000 feet. That's not close to the earth. Mm-mm. I mean, we usually fly at like 33, 32, 35,000 Like 30, feet. usually the high 20s, low 30s. Like, mm-hmm. so that has to be like waves couldn't get up there. Like really, because that would start a tsunami and then... I still don't think tsunamis go that fucking high. They don't. I was just saying. 30,000 feet, 30,000 feet in the air. So. <laughs> that would be a big fucking tsunami. That's where I like. I really like leaning towards the um, the the thought of a, another dimension because like a ship can go through, people disappear, and then the ship's just wandering around being like, what's up? Mm-hmm. And so like the ship that was found where it had like three and a half feet of water in the bottom, it could have just been after they disappeared on board the ship just ran into something and it started leaking like yeah so that's like it didn't have anybody on board to man it so it's just hanging out so the division can be aliens too right and so, so. then the one where the uh, uh the oh, was it ellen austin one where they saw the ship they put a crew on it and then they disappeared again like maybe they just kind of went through it again on accident <laughs> Maybe. And then they or found they the ship. Just disappear because of the storm. But you never storm. Know. But I'm thinking the storm knocked him through the the gate, and boom, no people. I mean, possibly, but I think that one's more so the storm just threw them off. It's possible. I'm just saying. I, I don't like know what it. the ship looked like. I don't know alternate dimension. But I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. See, I like that. I like that theory the best. So that is the topic for today. Um, Bermuda Triangle, super interesting, super like if you liked that, just definitely look at, look up some more stories about it. It's it's very fascinating. Um, movie was good, topic was good. Next episode, I believe, is a movie, my movie, and your topic, and I put it on your sheet. I know. So movie I chose, I had a hard time with this because next uh, next episode is for Christmas. It's on Christmas that or, or day before Christmas it gets released. I don't care. I'm going with my tried and true scary movie and I have not seen this yet and I'm very excited about it and it just came out this year which is I'm sorry I'm leading in I'm like letting drama like anyway the movie is called The Exorcist Believer so it's the Mm. next Exorcist movie and it is on Peacock so if you don't have Peacock definitely check it out it has a lot of good movies and a lot of movies that come from the movie theaters actually go on Peacock first so I think it's like only three or four bucks a month to have access to it and and it's not too shabby so I've seen a lot of new movies coming out because of it so The Exorcist Believer is out there I think it's on Amazon Prime too just throwing that out there Um, and Redbox but if you have Peacock you can just get it there directly Without having to rent it. And you get to do the topic, which I tell you what it is. <laughs> Jody Arias. Arias. So, 
So Judy Ari uh, Jody Arias is a bonkers lady, and we will cover her next time. Mm -hmm. And like what we say every time, um, We're Not Qualified is an episode that is coming up. So if you have any stories, comments, you want to throw in your favorite Bermuda Triangle story, definitely write in. We'll be more than happy to read it. Um, and you can do that by sending us a direct email at infothenight69 at gmail.com. And, or you can go to our website, infothenightpodcast.com, and just go to the contact section, and then it instantly sends us an email so you don't really have to do all the work. Um, what else can you find on our website, Lur? Merchies. Patronies. I didn't think you were going to say something after merchie. I wasn't. <laughs> so you can go, if you want to purchase merchandise, definitely represent, wear that shit, uh, go there, or go to Patreon. Like I said before, if you join Patreon, you get to see our lovely faces on video. And you will have early release episodes because I am lazy and I don't want to have to come back and download shit. So I do it right after we record. So mm -hmm. as soon as we record, you can watch the episode once it uploads on Patreon. So you get that little ad added tidbit. And of course, depending on how much you donate, you could technically run the show. So if you wanted to tell us what movie we should watch and what topic to do, definitely become a Patreon. Mm -hmm. So... Think about it. Do it. Love it. Do it. Do it to it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. All right. Well, I hope we, well, we hope we gave you a reason to stay in for the night. And until next time, peeps, peace out.